At Statens Museum for Kunst, we have a very enigmatic portrait of Christian II, painted by Michael Sitov, the famous painter coming from Reval, today's Tallinn to Copenhagen, to, to paint the portrait in uh, 1514. We have started a whole range of investigations in order to get to at least as close to the truth of the genesis of Christian II's portrait as possible. But there are still open questions. The first analysis that we did carry out was a tree ring analysis and that told us that the panel was made of oak and it was a tree that grew in the southern Baltic region. It also told us that the youngest uh, tree ring on the panel was from 1470 and if we allow for missing sapwood in the panel that tells us that it was filled at the earliest around 1480. We did uh, X-radiography and uh, infrared reflectography and cross-section analysis. So, now we're scanning the film and now we will see what's on the recording. The X-radiograph and the infrared reflectogram shows us that the current portrait is painting on top of another portrait. And the sitter of that earlier portrait um, does have some striking facial features. He has a very prominent long chin. He has a page boy hairstyle and he's wearing a hat, uh, which is like the one uh, more or less than Christian is wearing. His hands are positioned along a low parapet at the bottom of the composition. And very importantly, he is uh, wearing the Order of the Golden Fleece. So it's not the first rendering of the portrait, but a completely different... Doesn't it? It seems portrait. like a completely different yeah. sitter in the underlying portrait, mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe begin on that area, on that area? The overpainted fur, yes, okay. Yes, where the... So when the, the paintings arrived in the laboratory, the first analysis that we did was elemental analysis and uh, we could see that on the areas that uh, uh, clearly the two paint paintings overlap, where the fleece uh, is, for instance, uh, we could see that the elemental composition on these different areas were similar, mainly lead, tin, copper, uh, mercury, iron. So uh, the materials were from the time period of, of uh, the paintings. Um, the next step was to better understand also an overall amount of lead that we found on the painting. Uh, we took some cross-sections. What we could see on the samples, these samples is a, an stratigraphy, the different layers of the painting, uh, we could locate this let white clearly on top of the first portrait and not on the uh, top background. In terms of the genesis of uh, the second portrait, that is the portrait that we see today, uh, it's obvious from the cross-section paint analysis that the painter eliminated visually the first portrait by applying a coat of lead white paint on top of the figure before he began the second composition. Um, he did uh, keep the blue background color apparently, but he made it darker and more greenish by applying a second uh, layer for the background of the current portrait. So we have almost everything, because yeah. we have the blue layer, the ground layer, and, and, the, the, inscription. and the inscription. Another very interesting um, fact was that we also 
so a varnish layer that is below the date and we can see that this varnish layer is um, just uh, on top of the first portrait. So, and it's like an overall layer of varnish. The presence of uh, what appears to be a thin uh, layer of varnish between the paint of the first and the second portrait, uh, as well as the level of detailing uh, that we see uh, in the first portrait, uh, such as the golden fleece, suggests to me that uh, this earlier portrait was a completed uh, work and not a half-finished, abandoned composition by the time the current portrait was painted on top of it. With regards to uh, the date at the top of the painting, we can tell from a cross-section of the paint that there is a thin layer of varnish between the paint of the background and the paint of the numerals. And that indicates that this date, uh, 1515, may not be entirely uh, contemporary with the portrait, uh, but may have been applied at a later date. We know that uh, Sito um, came to Elsinore in June uh, 1514. And we know that from a document, and I guess it's one of the few documents we have uh, on this case. It is uh, Hans Pedersen in Elsinore who writes to the King of Denmark, Christian II, that uh, now Master Sito has uh, arrived and he will be sent to the king in Copenhagen because he knows that the king is waiting for him. We have this uh, outline from the X-ray. We can see that it is definitely a Habsburg, a male Habsburg. We can see the uh, chain of the golden fleece. We can see the Habsburg chin, the very marked chin. And if we look at portraits of uh, Charles V uh, from around this uh, time, um, it's, it's not uh, very far from, from, the, from the outline sketch here. You can see it in the microscope. Yeah. Is. Yeah. is that a varnish? Yes. You can yeah. see it better here. Yeah. Yeah. See yeah. that it oh. kind of less. Thanks to a conservation treatment and thanks to scientific investigations and the art historical archival research, we know much more about a very complex structure made of timber from the Baltic region arriving uh, to Copenhagen, probably with Michael Sito but already as a portrait uh, of another of the Habsburgan families. But the materiality and uh, the composition, including the archival research, is still uh, posing challenges. We don't know exactly whose portrait below Christian II. We don't know exactly when he painted this portrait. What we do know is that it's an exquisite example of Sito's craftsmanship as a painter. It's a beautiful portrait of Christian II, a portrait that he later used uh, as the master model of how he wanted to see himself depicted as a strong monarch of the Scandinavia.